Alright people, welcome back to the channel. Today I am featuring another Seiko. This one uh, again is courtesy of Jeremy, a local enthusiast and supporter who has made this watch available for review. Uh, so it comes in this kind of faux leather, maybe it's actually not trying to be faux leather, it's just a polyurethane or something uh, in a soft touch case here. And let's just open it and show you the suede interior here. So that's just how it looks like. I'm not going to go through the manuals because I have done so before, but just to show you this slightly different Seiko box in a model that's, you know, a, a little bit more expensive than the typical Seiko 5 or baseline uh, Prospex models. Okay, so let's just show you the watch. So guys, here we have the Seiko Prospex Automatic Divers 200 SPB 053 or SBDC 053. Uh, I'm not sure what the two different designations actually denote. I suspect one is actually a JDM model whilst the other uh, is the international or export model. But you know, both appear to be made in Japan. But let me know if you know more clarity about these two different model designations. Uh, this one is going to be nicknamed kind of like the 62 mass because it is heavily inspired by the original, you know, the, the 1960s diver, the 62 mass uh, Seiko's first dive watch. Um, so it's a very popular take on that old 6215 model. Uh, and as compared with the SLA 017, the, the limited edition, rather more expensive SLA 017, this is actually a larger watch, uh, whereas the SLA is more a 40 millimeter watch. And just to denote and let you know as well, the original is a 37 millimeter, you know, kind of vintage style diver. So uh, a, a lot of differences and upgrades uh, in terms of uh, the size uh, and as well as modern take on the materials that they put into this particular watch. Uh, the MSRP here is $800 uh, on the rubber strap. If you get the black watch, it also does come in the, in the steel bracelet version, and that is a thousand dollars USD uh, in the steel bracelet option. And as I understand it, the only place you can get uh, the 053 blue model with uh, the Seiko bracelet is Noman watches, and that one uh, they're on sale for around eight hundred dollars. I think that that's kind of like the seven nine nine. I think is the price that they listed for. I will put links to products I can find down the bottom in the video description. Uh, so on sale, uh, this is typically available for around 670 on rubber. Uh, in On grey retail, even slightly less, around 600 is what I found on grey retail. Okay, so that's what we're looking at. Slightly more expensive than a lot of the Prospects models that I have reviewed. It's, it's a slightly more premium watch as you will see. Okay, so let's just talk about the movement in this particular watch. So in here is a movement that I have seen before. I've, I've featured on the channel before. It's the 6R15. Uh, stats down the left of screen there. The things I will point out is that it does have a 50 hour power reserve thanks to a Spron 510 mainspring, which is more efficient and able to give you a slightly more energy as compared to, you know, typically 40 hours on the uh, on a usual Seiko movement in the 4 Series. Uh, it does have quick set date, uh, in this case implemented at the 3 o'clock position, uh, you know, that white bordered window, uh, white disc with black writing. Uh, rated accuracy, as you can see on the left of screen, in use, this is proving to be extremely well regulated. It's running about plus 1 seconds per day. Some days it actually runs bang on accurate. Okay, that's the movement. Let's just uh, talk about the case now. Now, uh, on all listings that I've seen of this watch, uh, the case is listed as 42.6 millimeters. Uh, I've measured it a few times. You know, I've done it again and again with calipers, and you can see the case is pretty much flush with the bezel there. Uh, and so I've, I've measured the bezel diameter as well. It is 43 millimeters. I cannot make it 42.6. So all the listings either don't measure it with calipers or get it wrong. Uh, or more likely, I think they are just parroting the Seiko information. But here we have it. Uh, it is 43 millimeters. If you have this watch, I would challenge you to measure it and tell me that you're not getting 43 millimeters like I am. Uh, so 316 cell steel with dia shield coating. So that's a kind of a micron coating uh, or, or Seiko's proprietary name for the micron coating that you've seen in some other brands that kind of gives a bit more scratch resistant to the steel. 13.8 uh, 
millimeter thickness to the top of the domed crystal there uh, and 20 millimeter lug width which is actually drilled you can see that they've gone for the drilled lugs there are uh, in line with the tool watch aesthetic and function uh, the lug to lug distance uh, so between my thumbs the lug to lug is a full 50 millimeters or i guess if you want to be more precise it's 49.8 millimeters uh, overall weight is not too heavy it's substantial uh, 123 grams uh, because it is on this rubber strap so it is actually not too heavy if on the bracelet of course it's going to be much more substantial than that okay guys talking about the finishing so circular brushing uh, on the top of the lugs there and then uh, you got this longitudinal brushing on the side that line of longitudinal brushing uh, but that is flanked by two polished surfaces so there's a polished bevel at the top and then it transitions to this nicely rounded polished surfaces that goes all the way through the case back. Uh, I think it has been listed or described as a Zeratsu polish, you know, at least that line. Uh, and then that's kind of like a very high level uh, labor intensive polish that typically is only used in Grand Seiko. So if it's actually true, you're getting quite a bit of labor value uh, in this watch here. And I got to say the finishing when I first took this out of the box really impressed me. It really is very well done you know this is a level above uh, certainly any Seiko 5 and uh, a level above just about any Prospects watch that I have seen it's really quite um, you know remarkable the, the how it catches the eye as well as the sharpness of the transition it's very difficult to show this uh, well on camera uh, but certainly this is something that caught my eye when I first held this watch in hand um, okay, so moving on to the case back. The case back is uh, uh, polished at the side and then circular brushing uh, in the middle. And I'll let you just, you know, rest your eyes on that Seiko there with that typical tsunami logo. So screw down case back, of course, in a very tool style diver and a screw down crown. In this case, they've gone with a sterile, you know, plain crown there. Uh, the water rating is on the face of the watch and the name of the watch is a diver's 200 meter ISO 6425 uh, rated watch. Okay, moving on to the dial then. The dial here is a rather gorgeous sunburst blue. Now I'm indoors, of course, I'm not doing this review outdoors, but outdoors it, it takes on a life of its own. And even here, as I let it play with the light, you can see how it kind of almost changes color depending on the, the angle of the light and how much light is falling on it. It's, it's really this nice and deep sunburst blue which is which is really kind of nice i really quite like the the dial the combination that they've got here it's got applied polished quadrilateral indices all the way around except for the three clock position of course which is taken up by the date window uh, so it's rectangles at the 12 6 and 9 position uh, but the other positions are kind of like this it's, it's not a rectangle right it's like a kind of quadrilateral shape in the you know one two four five position and whatnot so they are polished, filled with Lumi Bright. Uh, the hands, as you can see there, there's a broad arrow for the hour and a kind of a more traditional sword uh, for the minute hand. And the se seconds is just a simple stick uh, with a counterbalance lollipop. And the loom, in this case, like the SKX, is, is on the lollipop. It's not on the tip uh, of where the seconds hand is counting. Uh, so loom on all the usual spots. Uh, and as well as I'll, I'll point out, uh, the hands, uh, kind of this matte finish, so, so it's slightly uh, contrasting against the polish of the markers or the indices and uh, there is actually a blackened center, this matte black center to kind of give it a bit of a floating effect. So as I was mentioning, it's loom on all the usual spots and of course I'll put a loom shot for you guys to see how it glows in the dark and it is loom bright so this is excellently functioning loom and has no problems lasting through uh, you know, 8, 9, 10 hour night uh, in the dark. So surrounding the dial is a 120 click unidirectional dive bezel with a coated metal insert. Now, uh, Seiko, as usual, are not very forthcoming about details, but some reviewers have said that this is a, a amorphous diamond-like carbon coating, which, you know, which would be really quite something. It's definitely coated with some sort of reflective material. You can see it there. There's a, there's a type of varnish look to it. And it's quite interesting because I haven't seen anything like that from Seiko. Uh, but let me know if you know more details whether this is in fact a you know amorphous DLC coating. Uh, in terms of uh, the feel of the bezel, so let you hear it. Twenty-eight 
120 clicks, okay, 120 clicks. They were quite, quite soft, right? It's actually a, a relatively silent bezel, very buttery smooth, one of the smoothest Seikos I have felt, uh, I must say, if not probably the best feeling Seiko I've felt, but also, you know, one of the most expensive, okay? Right, so very smooth, you know, really almost no backplay, essentially no backplay on this bezel, really. They, they've really done a pretty well done job on this particular bezel here, okay? That's really uh, what uh, I feel about it. In the middle of that, above the dial, is a dome sapphire, okay? And they've gone for sapphire here, so let, just, let you just see the, the light play on that. It does have internal anti-reflective coating. And it's not just a simple dome, it's got a box edge, hopefully you can see there. There's a bit of a, a box edge to this sapphire there. And it kind of, if you run your hand across, uh, it's kind of contiguous with the edge of the bezel, with a bit of dip into the bezel insert there. Okay, so that's the description uh, of the case really, guys. Let's just move on to this strap, which is silicon dive rubber. So it's got this dive style, uh, you know, accordion uh, bit here. Right, it feels pretty supple, better than a lot of base Seiko rubber, certainly better than SKX rubber, uh, because it's kind of like a silicon base rubber here. Uh, a steel keeper, right, with Seiko there, and then a, a steel buckle with Seiko on it. Uh, but just to point out, it's brushed on the top, but it actually does have polished bits on the edges here. So nice little bits of finishing, but you know, all in all, it's still a silicon rubber strap. All right, let's just put it on for a wrist shot for you guys now. And there we have the Seiko SPB053 or SBDC053 62 mass star watch on my 17 centimeter wrist. And it is, you know, in any language, a large watch. It's 50 millimeter on the lug to lug. And it's kind of on the verge of being too large. I think in some ways it is actually a little bit too large for me, uh, for my size wrist. If you have a larger wrist, you can certainly carry this. But for someone with my wrist size, it does look a little bit disproportionately large, I would say. So just be aware of that. This is a sizable watch and it also weighs larger than, you know, somewhat larger than it feels uh, like it should on the on the measurements that you get. Okay, so there you go. That's the description of the watch, guys. Uh, what do I enjoy about this? Well, look, it's a full-blooded Seiko tool watch, and uh, one of the you know one of the more full-blooded tool watches that you can get. And uh, despite the fact that it's got sapphire, it's certainly it's it's very well specced. Um, you know, it's an homage to the legendary original 62 mass. So if you like that type of vintage aesthetic with upgraded uh, you know materials and design as well as sizing. This might be the watch that you know you go for because the, uh, to be honest the SLA 017 is kind of up on a table because it's, it was quite expensive and it was limited edition. Uh, you know, the finishing is of very good quality. I mean look at the chapter ring and the bezel. I, I don't think there's any alignment problems in this particular specimen you know which can be an issue with Seiko divers. It, it's not an issue in this particular watch at least in the specimen I have in hand. Uh, and, and just the case I've pointed out already the finishing is is excellent you know i would say you know for uh for seiko you know this is a step above you know they usually do pretty good stuff but this is a step above other things uh, that i have gotten my hands on and the regulation i've told you already excellently regulated and i think there's no accidents you know that they've done that uh, and a rather good combination of the the colors and finishing surfaces that they've gone for you know including uh, that deep sunburst style the lacquer or, or polish or whatever it is on that bezel and then you know the transitions between brush and polish surfaces pretty well done you know really is pleasing to the eye and i think more than the sum of its parts uh, the things to just be aware of you know the concerns i have well 43 millimeters but wearing large because the bezel is relatively narrow, hence the, the dive watch face is bigger than it otherwise be. Uh, you know, it actually wears larger than it, you, you might think on the 43. Uh, the 20 millimeter lugs on the 43 watch uh, is, is actually quite disproportionate. Uh, now the rubber compensates by flaring out here, right? You can see that. Uh, but if you're gonna change this onto a NATO or your own steel, you, you might not have that flaring or you won't have that flaring and it, probably will look a little bit disproportionate with 20 millimeters going up to 43 on the widest part of the case here. 
All right, and then the silicon rubber, you know, what can you say about it? I, I, I generally swap this out for something else. Uh, it is $130 more or 200 on retail more for a bracelet. So maybe uh, this is the better value proposition. Let me know your thoughts about that, whether you would get, uh, you know, rubber and swap it out or you would punt out for the bracelet version. And for the bracelet, it will be the usual Seiko gripes. It's push pins at this price range and it also has a pressed metal clasp. Uh, but I, I do understand it has more solid, uh, you know, deployed arms than the typical Seiko. So, so let me know your thoughts on that. Guys, I've spoken enough. That's my review on this lovely Seiko SPB053. Let me know what you think, particularly if you have this model or the 051 black model, or in fact, if you're lucky enough to have a SLA017, would love to hear your thoughts on this, you know, kind of modern updates of the old 62 mass Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things virology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.